The MCAT is hard and the MCAT is important. And to do well on the exam, it matters how you prep, how you prep, how you prep, how you prep. <laughs> How many times do you guys watch this commercial and you just are like super annoyed with it? Because I'm here to tell you guys that the MCAT does not matter. It's probably the worst exam ever created because it really doesn't tell you anything about you as a student. And let me be the first one to tell you guys that the MCAT is not important. It's not gonna determine the type of physician that you end up becoming. Unfortunately, we're dealing with such a flawed system when it comes down to applying to medical school and all of the different requirements that you guys have to complete in order to get into medical school. It's a completely flawed system. And for some reason, we're just not doing anything about it. And it's so disappointing to see a lot of you guys as pre-med students and you guys work so hard during undergrad to do your very best, try and get the very best grades you can. And then you go and take the MCAT and for a lot of you, you don't do that well. I think the average MCAT score is like right around a 504 or 505. And honestly, I think that's just the average of the applicants that get accepted into medical school. I think the actual average on the MCAT is a 500, yet most of the medical schools won't accept you unless you have above a 500. And even just having above a 500, like between 500 and like 504 or 503, your chances aren't that great of getting into medical school. And so like, what are we gonna do about this situation? You guys have most recently heard about the cancellation of like the clinical skills assessment on the step two exam. And so I think we're moving in a good direction. You know, I haven't taken step two yet and I really don't know much about the exam, but from the videos and from the other medical students that I've listened to, it sounds like the clinical portion of step two wasn't a very great exam to begin with. And so I guess, you know, by default, I'm glad they got rid of it. Um, but I honestly have no clue. But what are we going to do with the MCAT? When are we going to actually change how we view applicants? Because the physicians that we're currently producing and it's not all of them, so don't like go in the comments and be like, you're so wrong and all of this stuff, but they're really not great with people. And you know, if we keep sticking to this numerical way of choosing applicants to go into medical school, things are just not gonna change. We're not gonna evolve. And the way we prepare our future physicians is just not going to improve. Now, the huge issue with simply changing the MCAT is you can't just change the MCAT because in order to take the MCAT, you have to take all of the different pre-med classes. Now, let me be the first to tell you guys that all of your pre-med classes and the majority of the stuff that comes up on the MCAT, you're not gonna use in medical school. You're not gonna use as a resident. You're not gonna use it as a doctor. And so why are we making our pre-med students learn physics and organic chemistry and just general chemistry and all of these scientific classes that really don't have much to do with being a doctor. They have everything to do with being a PhD grad, with being a scientist, with being, you know, a pharmacist, you know, anything dealing with like chemistry and drugs and stuff like that. Yeah, chemistry is going to come into play a lot in those different types of fields. But when you just want to become a physician, and I know there's different you know, specialties you guys can go into and maybe organic chemistry will apply to your specialty or maybe physics will apply to your specialty. I don't know. Um, but for the majority of us, those classes aren't going to help us become great doctors. And so we really need to start focusing on changing the pre-med curriculum in order to eventually change the MCAT. And then ultimately we'll start producing better physicians, and then you guys are going to be better prepared for medical school. Because I'm here to tell you, your pre-med classes are not preparing you for medical school. I just completed the first semester of medical school, and I'm here to tell you the only class that's going to be relevant to you guys in medical school is biochemistry. Now, if you guys haven't taken biochemistry yet, I highly recommend really paying attention to the different pathways like glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, lipolysis, all of those different metabolism pathways, those you will use as a doctor, you will use in medical school. 
But as for organic chemistry and chemistry, you know, some of that biology, um, physics, you know, statistics and math, you're really not going to be using that in medical school. And anything that you may need to know from those classes, you'll just learn it during your residency. You're really not going to be required to know any of that stuff going through medical school. Now here are some of the classes that I would recommend taking if you are a pre-med student. Now keep in mind, some of these are not necessarily required to go to medical school, so definitely check up on that and make sure that you're at least taking the pre-med classes first and doing well in those courses. And then if you guys have time, I highly recommend taking some of these other classes that I'm about to mention. So the first class I really recommend taking is anatomy. And then the other class, you know, kind of by default is physiology. You're going to be using those a ton in medical school. And it kind of blows my mind that those classes aren't required to go to medical school. You know, I get that they're going to teach you anatomy and physiology in medical school. You're going to hit that really hard once you get into medical school. But I don't know why it's not required to actually apply to medical school, yet you have to take physics. So just kind of think about that. Where's, where's the logic in that? Now the other classes that I recommend taking as a pre-med student are biochemistry, which you guys have to take anyway, so that's a plus for you. And then the other one is embryology. Um, it sounds a little bit weird, but you're going to be learning a lot about embryology your first two years of medical school. Um, it's not my favorite class, and honestly, me personally, I don't really care how the body developed. Um, I'm not sure how much that's going to play a role in how I treat my patients. Um, I will say that if you go into like OB-GYN, embryology is going to be huge. So if you're planning on being an OBGYN, then definitely take embryology before going to medical school. Um, if you can, if you guys have time. I know you guys have really busy schedules, um, but that's just my suggestion. Now I guess let's kind of take it back to the MCAT and just kind of talk about what you can expect from the MCAT. Like I said, it's not going to help you in medical school. And here's something really important to know. It doesn't matter what you got on your MCAT once you're in medical school. Because once you get into medical school, you guys are all on the same playing field. And let me tell you guys this, there's people in medical school that got 515s or 520s on the MCAT that are doing worse than people that got a 500 or a 505 on the MCAT. And then vice versa, you know, if you scored well on the MCAT, sometimes you're going to do better than people that didn't score as well. And so there's really no correlation with your MCAT score and then how you do in medical school. They're completely different things. The MCAT requires you to learn a bunch of random, pretty much useless facts and then just regurgitate it onto an exam. The only thing that I think the MCAT's good for is kind of like the way they ask questions because once you get into medical school, you're going to start getting second and third order questions um, and that's going to require you guys to study a little bit differently. You're going to have to, you know, pull different concepts and put them together in order to answer questions. You're going to have to take your outside knowledge along with the lecture material in medical school in order to answer your guys' test questions. But that's pretty much the only good thing that comes from taking the MCAT. And guys, I just think it's super sad that medical schools put so much emphasis on this one exam when they should really be putting the emphasis on patient care experience. I don't know how many students I've met and talked to from different medical schools, from my medical school, that really have never interacted with a patient. Maybe they were a scribe, but you know, in all reality, being a scribe is not really the greatest way to get patient care experience. When I think of patient care experience, I think of actually interacting with the patient you know, hands on and really like getting to know the patient on a provider patient level. I think as a scribe, you're kind of pushed off to the side and you really don't get that like one on one interaction with the patients in the way that I think it's going to benefit you guys as future healthcare providers. Now, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a scribe. A lot of people do it. I feel like most medical students do it and that's their way of getting patient care experience. It's totally fine. I just think there's better ways of doing it. And I did make a video on really good ways in which you guys can get the best patient care experience 
So if you guys are interested in seeing that video, the link will be down in the description. Now, the last thing I really wanna to talk to you guys about is even though you have to take the MCAT, and I'm so sorry for you guys that still have to take the MCAT, it literally still gives me nightmares um, and definitely gives me anxiety. And all of the people that I talk to, I mean, it's, it's the same deal. So I'm sorry that you guys have to still take the MCAT if you still do, but I'm going to give you guys some pointers on how to best go about studying for the MCAT. Um, there's really no like cookie cutter way of studying for the MCAT. Everyone's different. Everybody has different study styles. Um, but one thing that can really help you guys get started, which is usually the hardest part, is just starting to study for the MCAT, is going to MCATSelfPrep.com. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about it. In their basic pro plan, which you guys can get for, I think it's like 10 bucks, but if you guys use my discount code down below, you get like 10% off. Um, but 10 bucks, guys, I mean, that's like nothing. You spend more at Taco Bell than you will on MCATSelfPrep.com. So go there, click on their basic pro plan, if you guys take a diagnostic test, they have um, like an algorithm, a software, you can put your test score in there and they will break down to the exact amount of hours that you need to study on every single portion of the MCAT in order to increase your score by however many points you guys want to. So it's a really cool tool that you guys will have access to if you get their basic pro plan. Like I said, it's like 10 bucks, use my discount code, and just know that I used MCATSelfPrep.com. I used it the second time I took the MCAT, and I used it for maybe four weeks, and my score went up four points in four weeks. So I think, you know, it's a really good investment. It's, it's really cheap, especially like their other mastery courses. So if you guys have a little bit more time and you need a little bit more help, like on the car section, or like knowing your amino acids and stuff like that, they have specialty courses that you guys can purchase. And basically anything you guys purchase, if you use my code, you get 10% off. So definitely don't pay full price, um, even though it's already super affordable. But if you guys just need like content review, like if you're just using like the Kaplan books, um, MCAT Self Prep has a bunch of free, yes, free content review. Basically what they did, they took all of the most high yield videos off of YouTube, like from Khan Academy, from like AK Lectures, and um, just a bunch of those, those YouTube channels that you guys know and love. So they compiled those YouTube videos into the different sections of the MCAT. So you guys don't have to go looking on YouTube like for you know how to do general chemistry or whatever. I honestly have no clue what the subtopics on the MCAT are anymore. I just know you have like behavioral sciences, biology, um, chemistry and cars and all of that good stuff. But they put all of the relevant videos that you're gonna need and all of that relevant material that you're most likely going to see on the MCAT and they put it into the sections of the MCAT for your guys' convenience. It's completely free to take advantage of that. And so I'll make sure to put their link down below. Um, so just go check them out. If you guys are planning on taking the MCAT, um, I just, I highly recommend doing it. What I don't recommend is purchasing anything from those big test prep companies. I did the Kaplan course. I did the in-person course. It was like $2,500. It was the biggest waste of money ever. So I did a review on the in-person Kaplan course. I'll put that link down below as well. If you guys are thinking of doing like Princeton Review or Kaplan, go check out that video before making that enormous purchase, okay? You guys will thank me later. So if you guys have any more like additional questions, drop them down below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. And then honestly, if you guys don't have any questions, just tell me what you guys are doing down in the comments. Um, are you guys in undergrad? What school do you go to? What's your major? What's like the class that you hate the most? You know, what would you guys change as a pre-med student. I mean, you guys are right in the middle of things and I'd be interested to know like what changes would you guys like to see as pre-med students going forward into medical school. So that's pretty much it for my rant today. Um, I hate the MCAT and I'm so sorry for you guys that still have to take it, but we, we've all been there, we've all done that. And if you guys have a low MCAT or a low GPA, come talk to me on Facebook, book an advising appointment with me, you'll talk directly with me and we will get you into medical school. So um, that's all I have to say, guys. I hope you guys have a great week and a great day, and I'll see you guys in my next video.